Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Monday, February the 22nd, the year's 2021. Let's talk trading. Do not be fooled. Okay, do not be fooled at thinking these videos are for something they're not. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. Do not be fooled. I Today I watched about, I don't know, two, three different trading videos, and I watched some other channels over the weekend. And it's kind of funny that each trader has their own way of looking at things. I have my way, and these other guys have their ways. And... A lot of times there's some overlap and what I mean by that is they'll take trades around the same area I'll take a trade for example they might take a trade in what I would call the rat zone but they call it something else and the point I'm making is it doesn't matter what it's called so don't be fooled by the name something is given like support resistance you know, supply demand. You don't be fooled by those names or like order block, which I thought I found a video that was going to explain it and they were explaining it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they added one more thing in and I'm like, what? So it's like, you know, I'm not going to be fooled. You know, there's just certain things on the chart that um, all traders that know how to read a chart would agree on. Like, we're looking at the same chart. Where's the open price? You know, where's the current daily high? Where's the previous daily high? Ditto for the low. We all agree on that. But when you start talking about trend or something else, divergence, all these other things, that's when the disagreements start. And that's when, you know, traders can get fooled. So I guess the point, the main point is, is that when you're looking at a chart, make up your own mind about what you see and trade what you see. Don't worry about some name, something is given, you know, just sit down at your trading platform, go over your trading plan, execute your trading plan. Because when you just remember, when you enter that trade, doesn't matter how much analysis you've done beforehand, that trade could be a losing trade. Or you could sit down at your platform, flip a coin, <laughs> and, you know, heads I go long, tails I go short, and you can have a winning trade. You know, but what it, what does it get down to, really? The main thing? It gets down to your risk management. You know, so long as you don't lose more in any one single trade than you're willing to lose, you'll pretty much be in the game for the long haul. Whether you're coin flipping or using a supercomputer to do, you know, linear regression analysis or something even though you don't need a supercomputer to do that you can do that on your laptop or desktop point i'm making is you know the reason for your entry has no bearing on the outcome of that trade in fact in uh, last night's video i talked about you know being like a casino and then i came across a video called trade like a casino well i had I think I had mentioned that on Cresslick back in, in the early 2000s um, or mid to late to somewhere in 2000 something. I know I put something out there uh, about casinos and I think that's when I um, came up with the Wick Zone um, because it was such a, a high frequency that the price doesn't like to stay in the Wick Zone that I said, you know, casinos would kill for these kind of odds. So let's just go through and take a look at the charts. Here we go have the uh, pound dollar, 347 pips above the open, 21 pips off the monthly high. It just put in a monthly high uh, this past hour, and 485 pips off of the low. Definitely is on the move. And we drop down to the weekly chart. You can see all these gaps have filled. So there was a couple last night. So if any of you traders um, 
took those gap fill trades, it paid off once again. And for those of you just tuning in, you see I um, updated the dollar TRO time where um, you get to have hourly um, comments and monthly comments. Maybe I should even put in daily. Uh, let me know. Is that a good idea? Depending on the day of the week, maybe have a comment out there. Just that idea just came to me. Maybe like don't trade on Monday, don't trade on Friday, something like that. Or you could put a note, you know, check for news or or whatever. Okay. And um, we're still putting in that range for the opening day. Right now, it looks like we're about 88 pip range here. Once again, the year 407 pips above the uh, yearly open. Oh, I need to go back to the weekly chart um, just to point something out. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're on our seventh green week in a row. You might want to start considering a buzzard reversal. And for those of you who don't know, usually uh, three candles of the same color in a row, uh, you start looking for reversals. So uh, you can see here, one, two, three reds, reversal. One, two, three, four greens, then there was a reversal. One, two, three, four greens, reversal. One, two, three, four greens, a reversal. One, two, three greens, reversal, and so on. So it's just something to look for. Inside bar, not going to have one again today. Not too much inside bar action here on the dashboard either. Range, no pairs over 100 today so far. That's interesting. I guess we're having a compressed day. Just a little bit bigger than uh, Friday's trading. You see the pivot point got taken out, but we still have a missed pivot down here. So the buy zone triggered. Uh, if you were using the pivot point as a bias, uh, you definitely uh, had a chance to make some pips there. Red rats are feasting at the moment. And, you know, once again, um, you know, H. Reardon um, said that, you know, every day price is going to make a high and retrace. It's going to make a low and retrace. It's just what do you do when that happens? I mean, you know it's going to go from open to high, so you trade away from the open. Then it makes that high, and depending on how high away from the open or the total range for the day, then you start to look for the reversal. So with the pound, somewhere around 80 pips is about the time to start looking for a reversal. Uh, 50 pips is about a 50% ATR retrace on ATR 14. That's, you could also start to look to take profit if you're going uh, trading away from the open at that area. But once again, you have to trade what you see. And, you know, don't be fooled by, by the names or indicators or anything else. Okay, we've got the pivot taken out. Our weekly pivot's at 139.56. We're quite a ways from that at the moment. Here on the um, Miss Pivots chart, you can see we had a Miss Pivot one from one day ago. Um, on the weekly, we've missed these two here. There's a weekly pivot from 148 weeks ago that might want to get taken out. We'll just have to wait and see which way price goes. in and out of the upper wick zone it was in it out came back in went out the other side came back in out the other side a couple of times on uh one of the trading charts that walmart and i like to use 
you can see here price broke through 50 paid off a little walmart trade there long trigger was at 60. eight pips on the hour 88 pips on the day And you can see here, we are uh, pretty much range bound here for the most part. Price put in the high here, a lower high. Now it's making a lower low, and that would be considered what those guys would call a break of structure, which I'm starting to understand it just a little bit better. And I can see how to use it to uh, basically as a bias using that structure. And let's see, maybe I can show you. If you look at the four hour chart, you can see it made a higher high and it made a higher low. So we've got an up structure. So if you come back down to M1, You can see it's within that up structure. It is now broken structure and it's coming back down. It might be easier to see when you have the balls on the chart. So here it was trading pretty much in a tight range, about maybe 10 pips here, moving this way. And now it just put in a lower low. So see here, it put in a higher high, put in a higher low, lower high, lower low lower high, lower low, higher high, higher low, lower high, and then now another lower low. So what this is telling me is you need to sit back and just wait because there's not a clear trading opportunity here. You know, here, oh, maybe this is a potential order block candle. But what I've decided to call it, this, this is the highest bullish candle, okay? The candle that made the high, highest bullish candle. So if price gets out of this range, you just go short. Uh, put your stop loss right above. You take your chances. Um, and so don't get fooled or get hung up. Well, that's not really an order block or that's not. It's like, I don't care what you call it. You know, this is the highest bullish candle for today. It has a range, you block that in, and then you can take the trade accordingly. In fact, you know, right here, um, actually, I, I'm not showing, we've got a bear block, it looks like right here. I'm not sure why it, it's, it put that in as a bear block have to look at it still working on some of that code but then you can see here there's a h1 bear block but then once again don't get caught up with the names it's more important just to see what price is doing and you can see here it's it's moving down not too hard to see yeah. red h1 candle don't trade against the h1 candle color um, rule of thumb so you just don't get fooled and sometimes the charts telling you just to sit on your hands and wait wait for a good trade i mean we've had a three ball this would normally be the wait candle but i'd be reluctant to jump in long I, I just don't see the opportunity. It could shoot to the moon, but I really don't see a trade opportunity at the moment. So I'm going to pass. And actually right here, there's that M1. That's the potential order block that I was talking about. And so you can see here what had happened. Price moved out of that. So. Fellow traders, don't get fooled. Remember, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one, over and out.